Hey, it's Ross from RossLukeman.com. Today I want to talk to you about how to connect one of these sea level water tank monitoring systems over to the Victron Servo GX. So in a recent firmware update, Victron announced that the Servo GX can now speak the RVC language. RVC is an RV industry communication protocol that allows their electronics to speak to each other. And uh, what I'd like to do in this video, I'm not going to go real heavy into how to stick these to your tank because the company that makes sea level is Garnet Instruments. They've done a great job on their YouTube channel. I would just search Garnet Instruments. They'll tell you all sorts of information on how to set these up, stick them to your tanks. The blue tape is kind of a clue. You're going to start out with the blue tape, get your positioning. I'll give you a little bit of an overview. This is the 710AR, their 9-inch monitor, and uh, it measures down to a 1 quarter inch resolution. And they also have the 12-inch, this is the 710ES2, it's going to measure down to a 3 8 resolution. And these can be stacked too high. This particular one will do tanks up to 25 inches tall with two of them stacked. If you stack two of these, you can do tanks up to 19.5 inches. You're going to clip the tabs off the top to tell it which tank it is. Or in the case of the freshwater tank that we have here, you don't clip off any tabs and it's going to default as your freshwater tank. So as I said, Garnet Instruments has extensive documentation both on their YouTube channel and in the manuals. But what I'd like to do is just, as you can tell, I've got it all set up. We're going to make it look easy. And then I'm going to come back through and give you some more details on maybe some of the pitfalls and some of the things that you need to do to actually set this up. So what we have here is we've got our single tank. We can do up to seven tanks with the current sea level systems. And you're going to daisy chain those tanks on the same two wires. I recommend using heat shrink butt splices so they're waterproof. And it's going to send a digital signal. And basically whatever you clip off on the top of the sender, it's going to identify as that tank. And so this one's coming in as, as fresh water to our monitor here. Just the blue and the black coming in. And the monitor itself is going to need a red and a black, so a positive and a negative. And I've got a little 5 amp inline fuse on the positive. The fuse rating wasn't too explicit in the manual. But if you don't have a water pump switch, I've got a little momentary switch here for my water pump. If you don't have a switch built in, you don't need a whole lot of amperage to run this. One amp would probably be enough. I went ahead and used a five amp little glass fuse, a five by 20 millimeter fuse to do that job. But as you can see, we are up and running. If we hit fresh, it's reading 80%. And um, the gray and the black, what we're going to do is we're going to program them out and we're going to tell it that we don't have those tanks. I'll show you how to program this and then we're going to link these two and I'll show you how to program this to talk to that, <laughs> so to speak. So let us go ahead and connect this. Now I have a special cable that I got from Van Life Outfitters. It's Ethernet on one end, so that's going to be an 8-pin RJ45 connector. And then on the other end, it's a 4-pin. It's a special connector from 3M. I'll put the part number down below. But we've got to go from 8-pin here to 4-pin here. And uh, let's go ahead and plug this in just so you can see it operate. We're going to go into the VE CAN port. And we've got a little double-sided tape. See if I can pop this out of here. All right. So this particular C level has a port to export its data to another monitoring system. So we are going to clip that into the back. I'll go ahead and let that hang. So these are now linked and it may show up. You can see there it is. So that was not there a minute ago. It's reading freshwater tank 80%. So that is the gist of how you set this up. Now for the VE CAN network, they want you to use these little terminators that come with the connectors that come with the Servo GX. So we're going to pop that into the other port. And the VE CAN protocol, uh, any CAN network, it stands for controller area network. 
and it is a, another protocol that allows you to daisy chain electronics and they send a digital signal that has an ID. They can all come down the same wire and the terminators, as far as I understand, they allow the signal to go to that last device and turn around and, and go back. So it kind of links everything together. Now we are all linked up. Maybe this looks easy, but let's talk about some of the pitfalls before we get into the programming. So as we have it now, everything's programmed, but we're going to go back in and get a little granular and we're going to go step by step and show you how to set this up. Um, Van Life Outfitters was gracious enough to send this particular cable and they also have a blog article that is very extensive on this process and um, I can tell you I really leaned on that blog article to get all this set up. There are a lot of details, some of which I'll explain in this video, um, but they assisted me in this setup. What we're going to do is um, talk about some pitfalls now. So with the regular sea level monitors, this is a, another one. This is made to be kind of an endpoint, so all the tanks would come in and report to here and you would have this in your control center. Um, however, there's no port on the back to export that data. So rule number one, you need to get either the RVC or the N2K C level. So let's break that down. Those are basically the RVC is the RV industry language for RV electronics and the N2K stands for NMEA 2000. That's the marine industry protocol for marine electronics. So these are basically industry standard languages and as it stands now, the Serbo GX can read either one. And so when they added RVC, that was the new thing they added to the firmware. Everybody took notice, you can get the RVC edition of the C-Level and it will talk to it through this VECAN port with a, a cord like this. Um, however, once you dedicate that port to RVC, everything that comes into that port has to be RVC. And so we have our sea level monitor, that's great, but there are other things that we may wanna bring into that VE CAN port, like a Lynx Smart BMS, that also uses the VE CAN port. And once we turn that to RVC, it doesn't speak the language of that other device. Now in the article from Victron, they say if RVC is too restrictive, use NMEA 2000, use the Marine protocol. So with the Marine protocol, we can talk to the Link Smart BMS, we can talk to the sea level, we can, it kind of expands our abilities. Now if you have all RVC devices and you want to daisy chain them together and they're all going to come into that port, fine. But in my estimation, I wanted to be able to add a Link Smart BMS and also bring in my sea level tanks. Um, so I went with the Marine protocol I know this is intense, but <laughs> trying to save you some uh, buying the wrong thing and having to return it. So this is the marine edition of the sea level. So it's got a port on the back to export that data. And this model number has N2K in it. So the N2K edition is, stands for NMEA 2000. That's the shorthand. Um, and then what we're going to do in the programming here is we are just going to go in and tell it to, um, we're going to program it so it will talk to this device. So I recommend that you get the N2K edition of the C-Level. Um, unfortunately, if you have a regular C-Level monitor, it's not going to work with this because there's no port to get that data out of it over to here. And uh, we are going to make this cable, but if you don't want to make your own cable, uh, Van Life Outfitters has them available. They make them uh, on site there and they have entire kits where you can get all of this in a kit if you'd like to set that up. I'm going to link to their blog article below. This is the article that I use to set this up and this is also, I'm going to use some of their graphics from that article to show you how to make this cable here in just a little bit. So that is how you're going to bring in these very reliable sensors. You're going to bring in that data. A couple of points on that as well, they only work for plastic tanks. So if you have metal tanks, it cannot read through that because it's sending an electronic signal to see where the fluid level is. If it gets too close to metal, it can mess it up where it's not getting an accurate reading. So plastic tanks only. 
As far as I could tell, um, I'm careful not to give false information on these videos, but um, they don't have propane sensors readily available that tie into here. Uh, some of these do have a propane, not the, not the N2K edition. This is the only one they have, unfortunately. But some of the C-Levels have a propane button, but apparently they are reading sensors from other companies. Um, so I, they don't have propane sensors readily, readily available. What I would do is bring in like a Mopeka uh, Bluetooth sensor and the, the uh, Serbo GX will read your propane over Bluetooth and that will show up on your tank's overview screen. So that's kind of a point that I should make here is you can have, this is a, a resistive tank sender. You can have different types of tank senders coming in. You could do voltage base, you could do Bluetooth. We could have some sea level coming in the VE can. Once the Serbo identifies it as a tank, it doesn't matter if it comes in as a hard wire, a, an ethernet cable, or Bluetooth. It, they'll all come in and they'll display on the tank's overview screen, which apparently has, is now empty. Uh, one of the things that you might want to do is reboot. When you link that up, uh, reboot the servo to, to show that tank. But uh, that is the gist of it. Hopefully that all made sense. At this point, we're going to get into the nitty gritty and we are going to program the sea level, program the servo, and uh, we're also going to show you how to make one of these cables and give you the part numbers for the little connectors that you're going to need for that. Now, before we get into that, if you're interested in your overall power system, not only your water tank monitoring, but things like shore power, solar power, and alternator power, I have a resource that you may be interested in called the Ultimate Van Power Cheat Sheet. It's got a discussion of those three major charging sources, solar, shore, and alternator power. And it talks about how they all have strengths, but they each also have weaknesses as well. But when you bring them together in a holistic power strategy, it's gonna make sure that you have a good charge source no matter where you go out on the road. So you can enjoy what you're doing out there and you're not gonna be worried about running out of power. It's also got a great discussion on different battery types and the strengths and weaknesses of those. That's going to help you narrow in on which battery type is going to be right for your situation. And then lastly, it's got a really cool diagram that I made that shows your entire system essentially on one page. It's going to show the three major charging sources at the top and how they make their way through the system and come out at your end devices such as your microwave or your phone charger. For instance, how does the solar panel connect and make its way through the system and come out to charge your phone? So it's a really cool diagram that I think you'll find useful. To get your own copy of the Ultimate Van Power Cheat Sheet, all you have to do is click that link below or go to rosslukeman.com slash vanpower. All right, so with that, let's zoom in on the sea level monitor and I'm gonna show you how to program it. Before we get into the sea level programming, I wanted you to see how it comes in by default into the Serbo GX. So this particular sea level monitor has all three tanks, a fresh, a gray, and a black water tank. And so they're all going to show up here. They're pre-categorized. You can see our fresh is coming in as fresh. The gray is gonna come in as wastewater and the black is going to come in as black water. You've got little symbols, like a little toilet for the black water. So it's pre-categorized, which is really nice. But in my setup, as you know, these two tanks don't exist. And so they are reading 100% because there's no actual sensor connected on those. Our freshwater is coming in as 80% as you saw before. So what we're gonna do is we're going to eliminate these two tanks over on the sea level monitor and they'll disappear from this screen. We may have to reboot the servo, but they will get knocked out where we'll get back to just the freshwater tank. So let's look at how to do that. So here we are at the sea level. I just want to start out by saying the battery button will bring us our battery voltage. And then we've got our three tank buttons. So if we hit fresh, it's going to bring in our 80%. We've seen that before. Now it thinks that we have a gray and a black water tank. Those are programmed in by default. But if we hit those buttons, it's going to say OPN for open circuit. So it's expecting a sensor, but there is no sensor. Same with the black water tank OPN. What we need to do is we need to tell it there are zero sensors on either one of those. So what we're gonna do is we're going to hit the tank that we wanna modify, and then we're gonna hold down the battery button. And as we hold these two buttons down, it's going to cycle through 
various settings. So we'll hit gray battery. For the first five seconds, it's gonna go into diagnostics and then alarm. And then it's gonna go into how many sensors. So gray sensors. So I let go of the buttons and we're gonna go into that setting and we need to go to zero sensors. So we, it's currently reading one sensor. We hit gray again, it's gonna say two sensors. Remember we talked about we could stack two sensors for extra tall tanks. We're gonna hit it one more time and go to zero sensors. So we have zero sensors on gray and we're gonna hit battery to exit and lock in that setting. So we'll hit that. So the gray is now going to say disconnected instead of open circuit like it said before. And then on the black, it's gonna say open, so we'll hit black, we'll hold down battery. Same deal, it's gonna go through diagnostics. Now let me show you if I release my button too early, it went into the alarm setting because I didn't hold down my buttons long enough. It's gonna go into the wrong setting. So that will occasionally happen. So let's just try to get back out of that. I hit battery to exit the programming. We're gonna hit black one more time, hold down battery. I'm gonna really hold down the buttons, make sure I don't let them up until we're at our correct setting. So we're gonna go 10 seconds in. It's gonna say black sensors. You probably saw that for a split second, it said BLS. So that is the, the black sensors. We've got one sensor, we're gonna scroll through to two, to zero. We're gonna hit battery to lock that in. We're good, to go, we're good to go, and now black is gonna say disconnected as well. So now let's go back to the Servo GX screen and see what we've got. Here we are back at the Servo GX, and you can see that our gray water and black water tanks have now been blanked out. They're coming in as generic fuel tanks, and what we need to do is reboot the Servo to get those tanks to disappear. So I'm going to click on the screen, click on menu, and we are going, you can see them there in the device list as well. We're gonna click on settings. And then this first item, general, that's where we can reboot. So you can see reboot. We're gonna click that line twice and it's going to reboot the Servo GX. All right, so we have rebooted. You can see we're down to one tank in our device list here. If we go back, out to the tanks overview, we're down to just the one tank. So that was successful. That's how you're gonna eliminate tanks from the sea level monitor and get them to show up here on the servo. Now let's go in and look at the VE CAN port programming that I did in order to get the sea level to even show up here. Let's click, click on the screen, go to menu, click on settings. And in order to program the VE CAN port, we're gonna go down to services. So services is the second to last item. And you can see there is a, an option for VE CAN port. We're gonna click on that. Now I already have this set up, but if we click on the CAN bus profile, you can see RVC is the last option. So that was just added in the recent firmware update. We didn't end up using it, but this is where we can select what CAN bus profile we want the VE CAN port to take on. So I selected the very first option, the VE CAN and Lynx Ion BMS profile. So this will take in the NMEA 2000 devices, such as our sea level monitor, and we'll also talk to the Lynx Smart BMS if we want to use that. But this ended up being what I used. So click the check mark to confirm. Now, when we come out here, you can see NMEA 2000 out. So this allows the Servo GX to communicate with other monitoring systems like you might have on a boat. We don't really need that, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. And then on devices, this is a device list. I can tell you the 3834 is our sea level monitor. I'm gonna leave the device numbers to zero. We don't really need to mess with that. But that is how you program the VE CAN port to talk to the NMEA 2000 edition of the sea level. So I will go ahead and get out of that. Let's hit menu again to go back to the main menu. And uh, if we go into our freshwater tank, I'm gonna show you a little bit of the programming. So you can see it says four gallons remaining. I have a five gallon tank here. So what you're gonna do is you're going to click on setup. 
You can see it's fresh water, so it's gonna default as fresh water, but we can change that if you want to. You can change that to something else. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it there. And then on the gallons, I'm dealing with US gallons. We can change the capacity of the tank. So I've already set this up. I believe it defaults to 143 gallons when you first uh, set it up in here and you have to go in and tell it the actual size of your tank. And then if you wanna change the units, you can do that there. I'm gonna leave it as US gallons. And then as far as the name, a lot of these you can change the name, but from what I can tell, you cannot change the name of these sensors. So it's gonna come in as freshwater tank zero. So the zero is the VRM instance. So if you use the VRM or Victron remote monitoring portal, um, every device that goes in there, it has a ID number basically. So that's the ID number. That's the only complaint that I really have is you're not able to rename this. If I wanted to call this Ross's you know, freshwater tank or whatever, I, I couldn't do that. So you're kind of stuck with these names. That's uh, maybe a minor complaint, but just wanted to let you know on that. But that is all of the programming. We've got our freshwater tank coming in there. We've got a very re reliable uh, tank monitoring system that's gonna work for years to come. So that is all the programming at this point. Let me show you how to make one of these special cables to connect the sea level monitor over to the Servo GX. Let's take a look at how to create one of these special cables. Now I'm gonna be using a Victron UTP cable. It's got the eight pin RJ45 connector on either end. You can use a regular ethernet cord, but I happen to have several of these available. So I'm gonna go ahead and sacrifice these. <laughs> I have uh, tested this out already. This is uh, what it's gonna look like. And uh, you can see we've got our special plug and there's actually a resistor in there. So I've got some spares. Uh, this special plug and these resistors are from mauser.com. And uh, I will go ahead and put the part number and the resistor rating for those but uh, these are pretty much the only two parts that you need. And then of course we need our instructions. This is from the Van Life Outfitters article that I mentioned before, very handy article. And it's just gonna show us how to insert the uh, four wires from our ethernet cord. The four wires are gonna go into this four pin connector and uh, we're going to crunch that down with our resistor in there and it'll all come together. All right. so. I would like to mention too, this cable is pretty short. This is a 36 inch cable or 0.9 meter from Victron. And uh, your sea level monitor is likely going to be down in your power system area with the Servo GX. And so, you know, you could use a, a little one foot cord if you wanted to. This is probably a little bit too short, but uh, we're not gonna need a huge ethernet cord. Um, so I'm going to use our three foot cord. And then I'll introduce the, the various tools as I go along, but uh, let's start out and keep it simple. What you're gonna do first is uh, we're going to clip one end off of this cord. So I'm gonna use my cutters. We're just going to clip one of those off of there. We're going to come in and we're going to come back about one inch, about 25 millimeters and strip off that outer jacket. And according to our diagram, we're only going to use the green pair and the brown pair. So next step, we're going to eliminate anything that's not green or brown. So we have a blue here and we have an orange pair and we're gonna come in and we're gonna trim those off. Not sure how well you can see that, but just trimming off the wires that we don't need Green and brown, you can see there, we're going to untangle these. They're twisted together. We're gonna to break them out into separate cables. Now these are, I believe 24 gauge. They're a little bit too small for a wire stripper, but what's convenient is these little connectors, we're going to shove the, I'll, I'll show you with my fingers, but you're gonna shove the wires in there and then the blades of the connector are gonna basically drop down on the wires and cut into the wire. So it'll cut through the insulation. So all we need to do is carefully insert these four wires 
into the connector in the same uh, in the correct spot and then we're going to take one of these resistors and we're going to put it on the middle two terminals and then we're going to crunch the whole thing down and quite frankly you can do that with a blunt object <laughs> or we can do it more appropriately with a pair of pliers and just kind of crunch it down and this little blue plastic thing it's got um, it's got kind of a cartridge that's sitting up and we need to smash it down and it will lock all of the wires in there. Um, so let's go ahead and give it a shot here. So I wanted to do a close up before we crunch everything down. You can see I have it completely assembled. I'm going to go ahead and take it back apart. So we've got our resistor off to the side there and uh, the wires, if we pull them back out, what you can do is kind of orient them in the order that they need to go. And uh, let's see if I can do this on camera. <laughs> it's uh, a little bit tedious, but basically just start wire by wire and thread them into the little holes. And they should slide into the channels that where they need to go. Double check based on the Van Life Outfitters diagram, make sure the wires are in the correct order. So it's going to be uh, green stripe, brown, brown stripe, green from left to right. And then you're just going to come in over the top of the brown and brown stripes, so the middle two terminals, and uh, bend your resistor into a, a U shape like this. And you're going to slide that over those middle two wires. And it is ready to crunch down. You just want to make sure that everything is in the correct order. Double check. All right, I've double checked everything and I'll say these are not quite regular pliers, but uh, this is a pipe wrench and you can see the little armature squish in there. And those cables are now locked in place. So at this point we can add a little bit of heat shrink and uh, finalize our cable. All right, so I've cut a little half inch piece of heat shrink. We've got our burns o -matic micro torch and uh, let's just slide this over the half inch heat shrink will barely fit over this plug and we just need to make sure we don't melt the plug itself all right so i've got the heat shrink on there we can test our cord and i've got a few final thoughts for you all right so i have put our new cable in place here and it does work and connect to the servo so that's always good to see I wanted to show you just a couple more things. If we drain this tank, I'm gonna open this valve. You can see the freshwater tank will start to drain and the servo is about two seconds behind it. So pretty much real time updates. And then if we close the valve, hit the pump, we can see it start to climb again. So, very quick updates on that and uh, that is my review of the n2k model of the sea level and how to tie it into the servo gx so i hope that was helpful and uh, gives you a way to put in some very reliable tank monitors now if you want help with your overall power system again you got to grab a copy of the ultimate van power cheat sheet just click that link below or go to rosslukeman.com vanpower so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.